Hey, there's no denying my favorite lure to throw is a crankbait. I get asked that all the time. All pros do. What's your favorite lure to use? Mine and Azuma Z-Boss crankbait. But what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take you through the seasons and choose the correct one. You guys stay tuned. Hey, we're gonna get started with the Z-Boss 6. This is what I call the 45 degree bank lure. We're gonna take you into the fall of the year on Pickwick Lake where bass, especially the smallmouth, have got the shad pushed right on the bank. Let's go take a look. Man, there's nothing like fishing at home. Every time I put in at Pickwick, it gets the juices flowing. We're just gonna get on these rock banks and go at it. Right. When they push them against those walls and those 45 degree banks, there's nowhere else for them to go. That's when those smallmouth are gonna jump in and they're gonna flush them and be ready to strike. There we go. Very first cast, Ain't you got the trolling motor down. Oh my gosh. That's what makes them fish so special. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that rod. Are you kidding? Oh, yes. Look at that. Gorgeous. Colbert County, Alabama. Tell me them Pickwick smallmouth ain't something. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Boom! The big thing is the water temperature's right for the shad to be on the surface. And it's hard to beat a shallow running crankbait when that's happening too. One thing that happens anytime those surface temperatures get cool, whether it's in the fall of the year or they warm up in the spring of the year, there are certain times that those shad are going to get shallow. And when they get shallow, the bass is going to push them against something that they can really feed on. Once they target them and they can push them, the shad can't go any further. And that is exactly what we had right here on Pigwig Lake. You get on those bluff banks and those steeper walls and the bass can really push those shad and they can target them and they get very aggressive. You get reaction strikes, they're just feeding. I mean, they see something coming through there. And, and when you get an overcast day like today, you know, and, and, and everything is right, they are smoking. There's another one, there's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Another head. You can tell a smallmouth just by the bouncing of the head. They'll back up and shake their head. Another big, yeah, another big smallmouth. Oh my gosh. Oh man, they're gosh a mighty. That's a five. That's a giant. Oh gosh, a mighty. Oh, oh gosh, look at that. Gosh, what a fish. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. Whoa, oh my goodness. That is a giant. You tell me that ain't a warrior. Look at that tail. Beat up from Spawn's past. This is like seeing a big old buck right here, man. This is, this dude's got some bad, I had him twice, man. He was not coming off. Man. You guys, get your Bass Pro needle nose. You gotta have them. Look at that tub right there. Man. Oh gosh, that's awesome. Gorgeous. Pew. Nothing like uh, starting the day with a Fish Monkey 5, I can promise you that. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, there's just something about fishing 45 degree banks. You're gonna have about two or three scenarios when the shad are pushed up in the fall of the year and also in the pre-spawn when bass are starting to get ready to move into the backs of the bays and they're gonna hold on that last bit of depth. They're gonna be feeding on crayfish, they're gonna be feeding on shad, anything that's back in there. You're talking about February, March, early April and even the further you are up north, can, this can be early May as well. That's when that Z-Ball 6 is gonna excel.